Thank you so much, Tracy, for singing that beautiful song. Um, tonight, I have the privilege to conclude our Lessons from Jesus series. How many of you guys have been following along a little bit with the messages we've been doing? All right. Well, that's good to hear. Um, if you have not had the opportunity, I encourage you, um, go check it out on our YouTube page. We've had four previous messages. In fact, we were even blessed with getting to hear our buddy Rodney speak. So go check out our YouTube channel. Um, we've had a good time with this series, and honestly, we thought this series would go even longer, but we're like, it's the end of the year, Christmas is coming up, let's bring it to a conclusion now. And so, we thought, what better way than to conclude it with the parable of the ten virgins, which is about the last days, and we're going to also talk about some of uh, Jesus' last encounters on this earth before he ascended to heaven. So, before we begin, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne right now, thanking you for your kindness, your love, how you never fail us, Lord. We thank you for these parables that you've given us. Thank you for the lessons that you've given us. We pray that when we leave this place tonight, we are not only people with more head knowledge, but that we have the heart knowledge and that we're more in love and on fire for you. Please, Lord, send us your Holy Spirit this evening. Work on all those listening online now, here in person, and those who will be watching online in the future. And Lord, I ask that you use me in spite of myself. Speak in and through me. That is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I want to start off by looking at the parable of the ten virgins. And so, If you would, it's on the screen, but if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to flip with me to Matthew chapter 25. Now, I'm going to say, when you're there, say, let's eat. And I know you guys are going to say, let's eat when it's on the screen, but if you can, open your Bible. When you're there, say, let's eat. All right. Let's eat, guys. Matthew 25, starting in verse 1. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took the lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you do not know, you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man comes. So let's break this down a little bit. We have ten virgins in this story. And what were all the virgins doing? They were waiting for the bridegroom. So all these people in this parable are people who, whether they are actively waiting for the bridegroom, at least they claim to be waiting for the bridegroom. And so the people in this parable are people who are pretty much of the church. People who say, hey, I am waiting for the bridegroom. I am waiting for the second coming of Christ. Now, what's, a, what's another char- characteristic that all of these virgins have in the story. They all have what? They all have lamps. Every single one of them have lamps. Foolish and wise alike, they all had the lamps. Now, what does the lamp mean? I want to go to Psalm 119, verse 105. It says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So everyone in this story had the lamp. And isn't it interesting that even the foolish 
had the lamps. Now what were the foolish ones missing that the wise ones had? They had, didn't have the oil. And so everybody in this story is waiting for the bridegroom, waiting for the second coming of Christ. Everyone in this story has the lamp or has the word of God, but the foolish were missing the oil. Now throughout scripture, oil is represented as the holy as a representative of the Holy Spirit. In fact, I'll give one example here. 1 Samuel 16 verse 13 it says, "Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from the day forward." So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. And so, when the oil when he was anointed with oil, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And so all these people in the story, let's recap it one more time. All of these people, are, are, all of these virgins are waiting for the coming of the bridegroom, waiting for the second coming of Christ. Every single one of them had lamps, or every single one of them had the word of God. But what did the people that were ready for the coming of the bridegroom have? They had the oil. They had the Holy Spirit. Now what does this mean? They all had the Word of God, but only some of them had the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? I want to go to Luke chapter 24, and we are actually going to be looking at verses 13 through 35. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 35. And that brings us to the disciples on this road called Emmaus. And these disciples had a very rough past few days. They had been following Jesus all these um, years and months, and they've been, um, had all these experiences with Jesus. They even say in this text that we're about to read that we thought he was going to redeem Israel, but guess what? He's dead. And so they had these rough days. They were down and out. Their Savior had just died. And that brings us to Luke. 24 verse 13. It says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these, of all these things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed in reason, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were strained, so they did not know him. And so Jesus comes up to his disciples and sees them, but the disciples don't even recognize him. What happens next? It says, And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another, with, with one another as you walk and are sad? And so Jesus pull, pulls up to the scene. He sees his disciples, and they are visibly distraught. They are visibly sad. So what happens next? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things have happened. And yes, certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision, angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And so he's, uh, Jesus is like, why are you all down and out? And the disciples basically give him a recap of what, goes among, go, what has went on and gives them reasons why their state of mind is so gloom and sad. Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. 
So Jesus, he comes, he pulls up on the scene. He sees his disciples down and out. They had had these rough couple days. They were at the lowest of the lows, and he pulls up to the scene. He finds out they're sad. He finds out why they're sad. And what does he do to respond to their trial? He gives them a Bible study. He gives them a Bible study about all the things concerning himself in the Old Testament through all the prophets. He basically showed them how, hey, I was in that story. I was in that account. I was right there. I was right there. He gives them a Bible study on him throughout all the scriptures. That was his response to their being dismayed. What happens next is interesting. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took the bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And this is the part I want you guys to hear right here. And they said to one of another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us. And so, the disciples are down and out. They're discouraged. And Jesus gives them a Bible study. He reveals himself to them throughout all of the scriptures. And what did they say happened to them? So, they said, our heart burned. Our heart burned. So what happened in this parable of the ten virgins? We had all these people who were waiting on the second coming of Jesus. Every single one of them had the lamps, but they were missing the oil. The foolish ones were missing the oil. Did not the people in Jesus' time, did they not all have a knowledge of the Torah? Did they not all be able to, at the snap of a finger, quote to you, a verse from the Torah. But guess what? Jesus brings that role of the oil, the Holy Spirit here. Because what does the Holy Spirit do for us today? He reveals Jesus to us. And so these disciples, they had the lamps, so to speak, of the Torah. They knew it, but they did not see Jesus' true mission. So Jesus goes, takes those lamps that they have, that knowledge he has, he reveals himself throughout all of those scriptures, the oil. And what is the result here? It says, did not our heart burn within us? So what happened with the lamps combined with the oil created a light, created fire? Jesus revealed himself to them, the oil. And when they took the lamps and saw that it revealed Jesus, Their hearts burned. And so we can see that the condition of people in the last days is to have a heart on fire. Now I want to talk about a little bit about what it means to have a heart burn or to be on fire. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death Jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. And then the next verse is not on the screen, but it says, Many waters cannot quench love. Throughout the Bible, we can see that love is associated as fire. In fact, I want to go another step further. We see another thing that is associated with fire. (coughs) Hebrews 12, 29. For our God is a consuming fire. And so fire is associated with God, is associated with love. But guess what else? 1 John 4, 8, For he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And so when the Torah was combined with Jesus being revealed to them throughout that Torah, their heart burned. So when the Bible is combined with the working of the Holy Spirit, revealing Jesus to us, his true character, we are supposed to be on fire. 
We are supposed to be loving. We are supposed to be like Jesus. As he is revealed to us, we are to become more like him. Because God is love is fire. We connect the dots on those three verses. God is love is fire. So that means that we are to be like Jesus. Now what does it mean to be like Jesus? John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And so what happened? Jesus revealed himself in all the scriptures. The disciple had his heart burned because they had just seen Jesus in his true mission, in his true character revealed to him. And when they had that revelation to themselves, they had a heart burn within them. And if you look throughout the following books and acts and stuff, we see that they go to the ends of the earth preaching the gospel. Because when Jesus is revealed to them, guess what? They naturally want to become more like him. And as they become more like him, they want to see every single human being saved. Jesus' final call on earth, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. The natural result of seeing Jesus and having an encounter with Jesus is having heartburn and wanting to share that with others. And so in the parable of the ten virgins, all of them ended up, or not all of them, the wise ones ended up with lamps that are on fire. And the concluding remark is, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when he comes. Beloved, how do we watch therefore? So often, we can get in the habit of going through these scriptures merely to know more. And perhaps you even want to go through the scriptures to know when Jesus is coming, when the signs are soon, of his soon coming are. And all of that is okay. But if we do not have the Holy Spirit revealing Jesus to us each and every day, then we are not going to have lamps trimmed with oil burning. And so the conclusion to watch, therefore, is simple. Fall in love with Jesus daily by opening that Bible, which is the lamp, but make sure that you are allowing the oil, the Holy Spirit, to reveal Jesus to you daily. And I also want to add this. Don't only watch for yourself, but watch for your fellow brothers and sisters. After, uh, in Matthew, uh, Luke 24, it says that Jesus broke bread with them. And so, how do we go about the business of Jesus to see every single human being on this earth saved, we break bread with one another. We make Jesus the center of the message. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but these are they which testify of him. Each and every word on this book testifies of Jesus. So, our appeal is simple. Jesus gave parables because, like Kenai said, he had the Herculean task of trying to describe the kingdom of God, this kingdom of perfect happiness and perfect holiness to a world that's so steeped in sin. And he had to try to find a way to relate that kingdom to us. And so with this closing parable, it is fitting that we look at a parable that is relevant to us one day being in heaven with Jesus forever. My appeal is simple. 
The foolish did have their lamps, but the wise did too. So do not neglect the reading of this Holy Scripture. But as we are reading this Holy Scripture, may we not go in there with preconceived notions, but may we rather submit ourselves to the working of the Holy Spirit so that way Jesus can be revealed. And as Jesus is revealed to us, may we break bread with others so that they too may have a heart that is on fire so that they, they will be ready and we will be ready for the coming of the bridegroom. He is our friend. And sometimes it's easy to forget that he is indeed our friend. So that is why it's so important for us to remind ourselves daily through the reading of the scripture so that way we can see him in his true character and his true love for us and the true friendship that he has with us each and every day. So my appeal is simple. Let us commit ourselves to trimming our lamps with oil each and every day by allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to us in all the scriptures so that way our heart is on fire to the point where we want to be in heaven and we want to see everybody else around us in heaven as well. If that is your prayer tonight, please bow your head and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne right now thanking you for being our friend. Thanking you for the price that you paid on our behalf. Lord, it is such good news. It is the best possible news that the creator of the universe loves us so, that, so deeply. Help us to dig into scripture daily with the guiding of the Holy Spirit so that way we never forget that fact. And may our heart burn so much to the point that we want nothing more than to share that love with others. We thank you, God. We love you, Lord. Thank you for all the beautiful lessons that you've given us through Scripture, including the parables. We love you. We thank you. Use us as you wish. In Jesus' name.